very typical fanboy <laughs> fight club. Um, was I was obsessed with uh, Charlie Kaufman's Being John Malkovich, like made me sort of like blow my mind that that felt like something you could do on screen. And Mulholland Drive, I don't know if it was, it just felt like all of a sudden it was, you were able, I realized that you could do something completely unconscious with film. And I don't know, maybe it was also like latent gayness, but all of that was, those three films I think as a teenager really made me know that I wanted to do this for a living. I think stories can name something into existence. So I think that sometimes there's something going on in the undercurrent um, that no one, that you can feel the presence of, but it's, it's, it's nebulous and it's difficult to sort of like even understand that it's actually existing out there. And I think that stories with a metaphor or with genre or just with really good characters can kind of bring a concept to the forefront that you're like, that's what I've been missing. Like, that's the idea. That's the thing that I haven't been able to name. And I think the more we can name those things, the more we can sort of perceive them in our own lives, perceive how they're being used by people and corporations and organizations around us, and tell new kinds of stories to sort of like confront those things or discuss those things or um, just negotiate with them in our own lives. I am a student of beginnings. I love the beginning of things. I love world building. I love structuring things um, to figure out what's the best sort of pathway into existence of like how a story un unrolls itself and unveils itself to you. And I find it a very private, magical time. I spent a lot of time thinking that I didn't do it right or I was like, lazy about certain ways of, of processing. And then I just sort of realized that my process was to spend a month reading and taking a lot of baths <laughs> and, and free writing and sort of like imagining characters in different situations and walking a lot. And now that's part of my process is to, to sort of accept like, okay, that's, this is the part of the process that if I don't do these things, if I try to skip to the next step, ultimately it won't work and I'll have to go back to the beginning. So if I can, so I think to start something for me is gonna be different what it is for another writer for you, but it's really that, um, yeah, that process of like, there's ideas that are floating around that you don't know yet how they fit together. And, and everything you read, every book you read, you open up and you're like, oh my God, that's the answer. It's that like very magical time that for me, has to be spent with reading other screenplays, watching other movies, um, you know, uh, uh, journaling, like all those things, you also have to input in order to output. And so that's the thing that I like to do in the beginning to sort of trick myself into writing. Well, I think there's a reason I'm a television writer, <laughs> which is that I think sometimes by myself it's very, difficult for me to finish things. And there's something amazing about a TV room in which you, there are so many different people who are so good at so many different things that you can, when, it's, when you're doing it together, nothing seems hard. But I think for my own work, um, you know, obviously I finish lots of things, but I also have a lot of half-written projects from, you know, scattered throughout. And sometimes that was meant to be because you sort of get through half of a project and you're like, oh, this isn't exactly what I want to be doing. Like, and it, it makes you realize what your next screenplay or pilot actually should be. So I think none of that is wasted writing, but I think um, for me, that's the challenge sometimes. If I've learned also about my own process that I have to sort of write that first draft or what I've learned to do is also write your outline as a sneaky first draft. So sort of really visualize every scene, really get into the meat of every scene. Don't sketch it out too much. Just like, don't be too abstract in your outline, but be very detailed and very, you know, name the emotional core of what you're trying to do in that scene. Um, 
spending more time in the outline for me then helps it uh, um, be fleshed out later. Think about what game you're playing with your audience. Um, I don't think I learned that until I was older and sort of farther along, but what I mean by game is that you're doing a scene and in the audience's head, when you watch TV, you're like, you are making assumptions of what the next scene is gonna be. You're making predictions, you're thinking, oh, that maybe connects to this. You're, you're logging things together. And if you respect how the audience, you know, thinks about your work, then you can subvert or satisfy those expectations of an audience in really, I think, just beautiful ways that really um, make an audience happy. Like an audience can be, oh shit, that's the way that that went. I thought it was gonna go this way. Or like, I knew it, I called it. You know, like an audience likes to be treated as intelligent and on this road with you. And so I think that while you're learning your craft and learning everything that you're gonna be doing, like which is just to be a magpie and take all the tools and all, you know, um, the advice you have, but also just understanding like what you like, like what you actually are drawn to writing about or what you like in other people's movies or TV shows and sort of collecting those topics or moments. The other thing is to just think about like, you're also hosting a party you know, as a writer. And so to treat your guests correctly, like invite them on the journey with you so that they know where things might be going in your party. Lately, Abbott out Elementary um, and Fringe. <laughs> Pickles, Cornichon, specifically the little ones. Absolutely pizza because the first week we ate so many donuts and I can really not look at a donut again. <laughs> Anything without lyrics. I think I listen to a lot of, um, yeah, ambient music or um, music I know very well so I don't have to think about what the lyrics are saying. One hour with a group of people in a TV room and I think recently um, on my solo writing adventures this year, um, I'm interested in writing um, a half hour dramatic, um, you know, a good 27 minute <laughs> um, TV show that has genre and drama in it and also some levity and seeing how, how far I can take that form. Taxi Driver is a really kind of incredible script because it shows you how much of like an inner monologue you really can have and how um, how useful that can be. And I think we're in a um, ecosystem right now that actually we're rewarded by saying what the characters are sort of thinking or like helping the reader sort of understand that. So I think I really like to look at what came before and then sort of like what's really what kind of new scripts are out there right now um, and how those have changed. Um, but yeah, anything by, I think Charlie Kaufman has great scripts and I think Jonathan Glazer has really great scripts too.